The book of James is one of the best arguments for the reality of the resurrection that I know of. Not because he makes significant logical claims or shows beyond a shadow of a doubt that it actually happened, but simply because of who wrote it. Most believe the book of James was written by the same James in the book of Acts that is one of the leaders of the New Testament church, James, the brother of Jesus, or rather the half-brother, since Jesus said God is his father and not Joseph. Now, initially, he was a skeptic, and actually, at one point, he went to collect Jesus with his mother and other brothers because they thought he was out of his mind, but he became a believer and a leader in the New Testament church. And actually, in AD 62, he was thrown off a high point of the temple, stoned, and then finally killed with a club. Now, James becoming a believer is one of the best evidences that we have that Jesus actually rose from the dead. After all, what would it take for you to believe that one of your siblings is actually the Son of God and be willing to die supporting that claim? It would take nothing less than having that person die and then come back from the dead. And that's what happened. And so James becomes a believer in Christ. And then James wrote this book to help encourage other believers in their faith so that their faith would become more than just words. Which brings us to what I think is the key verse of this whole book. This is James 1 verse 22, where James says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, but do what it says. See, if faith is trust, then trusting Jesus means putting into practice the things he says that are good for us and walking away from the things that he says are not good for us or for those around us. Actually doing this, not just agreeing with it in principle, not just saying, you know, ah, Jesus was a good teacher and yes, that sounds like an amazing thing to do or you're right, I probably shouldn't do that anymore, but actually doing the things that we know are amazing things to do and avoiding the things that we should avoid. Now, James gives us a really good illustration in the next couple of verses in chapter 1. He says, Anyone who listens to the word but doesn't do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forget what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. The perfect law that gives freedom when we do what it says. See, true freedom is not the ability to do whatever we want. True freedom is the ability to say no to those things that are not good for yourself or for those who are around you. True freedom is doing the things that we were made to do in the beginning. True freedom is becoming the kind of person that God wants us to be. And truthfully, if we're honest, the kind of person that we want to be as well. So, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says.